I can go ahead and introduce us and then we can just go ahead and keep going. Awesome. So hi, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and get started and I'll just let people in as they come. Um, my name is Alexa Stone. I am a senior academic advisor here at SOPA. Um, so I wanna thank you guys for joining. We have um, Susan De La Husse, who is our career advisor, who's gonna give a wonderful presentation. If you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself, Susan, and then um, I'll go ahead and say another word after that. Awesome. Um, so my name is Susan De La Husse. I'm the career and professional development advisor here at SOPA. I joined back in September, so not even a year yet, but um, my background is in recruiting. So I worked at some law firms doing all the attorney hiring, and then also at a local tech company doing the hiring. So I have reviewed many resumes and cover letters and applications and diversity statements. And so I, um, enjoy helping students getting their materials ready and preparing for their job searches. Thank you, Susan. Um, so we this is event is sponsored by SOPASO, which is the School of Professional Advancement Student Organization. Um, so in the previous years, um, we haven't been as active as we would like to be. So starting actually last year, um, we decided that we want to start having more events, and this is going to be our first webinar that we're having this semester. Um, we are Our goal is to have at least two events a semester, one online and one in person. Um, so this is our online event that we're having um, for spring. We will be having an in-person event um, later next month. Um, you're going to get more information about that, but we are inviting all SOPA students um, and to an, and a guest to a Tulane baseball game. Um, and SOPA so is going to handle the cover charge for everyone. Um, so you'll be getting an email um, from myself about um, the invitation for the um, baseball game. We would love for you and a, um, a guest to join us, to meet other students. Um, we just want you to have a good time and kind of interact um, with some students that you may not have met. Some faculty members will be there, program directors, other staff members. So it's going to be a good time. Um, so we'll send more information um, about that to you as well. Um, so without further ado, I think I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to Susan um, for her presentation today. And we will be done by 5.50 today. So if any students do have a six o'clock class today, um, we will be done um, to give you guys enough time to log in for your or to attend your six o'clock class. I'll try not to keep y'all that long. Um, so I put I'm about to put in the chat, um, I just put four links. Um, so one, the first one is to our career services portal on Canvas, which I created and then I update all the time. So if you all have any feedback, um, please don't hesitate to let me know. I, um, I'll i share my screen and show you all how that looks. And then I have, um, my LinkedIn profile up there, and I'll show y'all if you have a LinkedIn. Um, typically, it's not your your name that's in your, well, it's part of your name that's in your profile name for LinkedIn. Um, so if you want, I'll show y'all how to change it just to make it um, more user-friendly if you're sending your LinkedIn profile name out. Um, and then my contact information on the SOPA page. And then a, a link to our SOPA calendar for all of our upcoming events because we have a lot of stuff coming up. So let me share my um, screen with y'all. Hold on one second. Let me get to Canvas. Um, and so in the career services portal, I have put a lot of resources for y'all and the, we have the reminders. Um, I've, I put some announcements up. Um, I try to put them up weekly. And then here are some websites that I think are the best for when you're doing a job search. So I try to make sure if it's for tech jobs or nonprofit jobs, I make that clear. And then 
my personal favorite is indeed.com. So when I was looking, when I'm looking for a job, I use indeed.com. It's just super user friendly and you can create a profile, upload your resume into it, apply directly to jobs. And then also I love to be able to set up uh, an automatic email. So if you're searching for a specific position, like I was looking for career counseling in New Orleans, you can save that search and then just get a, a weekly email or whatever time you set it to with all the new positions that have um, those keywords in it in the city that you're searching for. So you don't have to keep scrolling their website constantly. Um, so I really do think, I don't, indeed, it's just the one that I thought was most user friendly and had the best um, jobs available on it for me. And some other things that I have in here are a cover letter format, um, tips on how to nail that interview, some really good LinkedIn learning videos, mock interview questions. Um, so my my first tip is to, uh, if we're, doing, we're going through the top 10, is to join the career services portal. Um, if you get to the point where you want to meet with me, you're about to have an interview, we can do a mock interview. I do those with a lot of students. Um, and it is really helpful because a lot of the questions that interviewers ask are repetitive. So if you don't see them in your first interview, you might see them in your second. But if you've rehearsed your responses, um, you should be in good shape. So some resume and portfolio building websites. And then I have broken it down to our different areas of study. Um, so we'll just click on like the digital media. And I put in here links to local companies, but also national companies. And the links should take you directly to their career pages. So it just takes out a lot of steps for you. So you can just go straight to their careers page and then see their open positions. Um, you know, it is time consuming to look for a job. So I am trying to um, help you all out by doing some of that for you. Um, my next um, tip, is to update your resume. So that is so important to always have an updated resume. Even if you have a job right now and you don't think you're looking for a new one, um, I have we have SOPA um, student workers who work at our front desk at our office. And one of them, I asked her one day, I said, do you need help with your resume? I just started working here and I was looking for clients. I'm like, hey, can I help you with your resume? And she was like, oh no, I'm fine. I, I have a few jobs. I don't, I don't need to update my resume. So I was like, okay. So then she emailed me one Saturday, like a month later. And she's like, my mom ran into someone and they told her that I should apply for this job at their office and they need my resume on Monday morning. And so anyway, I hopped on my computer and updated her resume, but it's just those types of things that really do happen. So it's always good to have an updated resume in case someone asks. Um, so I'll I'll show you mine, although some of it's true and some of it is not. Um, so I. Um, I just added like an extra section on here. If you're in a master's program, I put that on there, but that's, I didn't really do that. Um, everything else, I think I really did. Um, but anyway, so most companies really just want to see a one page resume, right? Um, and they want it to be formatted a certain way, easy on the eyes. If you're currently in school and that's what you're focused on, then your education should be moved up to the top. Um, and, but if you're, so I'm obviously out of school, so my experience is at the top. So if you meet with me, we can work on a resume and just make sure it is 
formatted correctly. And also, um, I really enjoy interest on a resume. And it's just something that can make you take the take the conversation in a different direction. So um, I like to hike and bike and, and, you know, people can say like, oh, where do you hike here? Well, actually, there's a really great path that I love to go do on the North Shore. So, or actually a few. So, um, and then they might be like, oh, really? Like, tell me about it. So it can really take the, the interview in a different direction. Instead of talking about work, you kind of get to know a person, they might say, oh, well, um, you know, have you tried this bike path or this hiking path? And so it can, it can take the resume out of like a little bit of um, a formal um, feeling and open things up. So when I started at SOPA, Gina, our office manager, we really hit it off because um, she saw my resume and it has on there that I like to visit breweries. So I, she's like, oh my God, I love beer. And I'm like, I do too. So like that is how we kind of got to know each other when we sit next to each other. And so we'll say, oh, have you gone to any new breweries over the weekends? Um, so when you're interviewing for a job, they want to know that you are going to be, um, a hard worker and you have the right experience, but they also, know that they're going to be spending a lot of time with you. So they also want to get to know you in the interview. So I I have this um this link that I send people if they're struggling with interest to put on their resume. I have this page that has a list of a thousand hobbies. And I'm like, I am certain you can find five on this page out of a thousand. So um it's fun to have on there and definitely, um, you know, any volunteer work, any um, computer skills, those are all really, really important to have on there. Um, so I can help you all. I can send you a sample resume that is not all filled in, but has a template if you want to get started on one, or if you have already worked on one and you need to update it, we can always Zoom and I can help you with it. Um, in addition to uh, having a resume, it's always great to just have a sample cover letter on hand um, or to just have created one. And I was at a conference earlier today and we were talking about chat GPT and um, online there are so many sample cover letters, but we want to make sure that yours is genuine and is really, um, you know, something that you have written and creative created and tells your personal story. So I'll show you, um, this is kind of my guidelines to a cover letter. And, um, you know, your first paragraph, they don't need to be long. So I've read a lot of cover letters and actually a student emailed me the other day and he sent me his resume to review. He he sent me the link to the job description that he was applying for and he sent me his cover letter. And I I'm I know him being pretty well. I've met him in class. I've Zoomed with him and I was running out the door to go out of town for the day with colleagues. So I left him a voicemail and I was like, hey, I am I'm going to update your cover letter this afternoon, but I just wanted to let you know, um, I don't want to see any bullets in a cover letter. Those are for your resume. So I'm going to shorten it up, but I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I get back from this work trip today. So your bullets for your job description should go on your resume. Your cover letter should just be a few paragraphs. So it's really putting into writing your story. So in the first paragraph, you're just saying, I would like to apply for this position at this company. And then something about yourself. So if the job is in New Orleans and you grew up here, 
like I did, I always put, I was born and raised in New Orleans. So people know, like, I have a commitment to the city. This is where I'm from. This is where I want to be. And then you can say a few more things like, I'm, you know, some qualities about yourself. I'm a team player. I'm detail oriented. I'm hardworking. Um, your second paragraph is really for you to highlight your resume, but make it current. Like currently I'm studying at Tulane University. This is what I'm, you're putting your resume into sentences, but you are want to make it interesting. So this is what I'm studying. This is my favorite class. That's not on your resume. So let them know what your favorite class is, what piques your interest. And then also if you're working while you're in school, let them know that. That's really impressive for you to be able to juggle school and a job. So while while studying, I'm also working part-time at Tulane in the uh, tech department, and this is what I handle. And so your your resume, I mean, your cover letter does not need to tell um, your entire resume story. It's really what you're currently doing. So that is going to be that second paragraph. And then the third paragraph is just niceties, like, Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, so hopefully after I've explained that, a lot of people are scared. They're like, I don't know what to say. And um, and I'm like, well, it's about you. So you you do know what to say and what you're currently doing and um, why you want this job or why you want to live in this city or, you know, if you want to work at a gaming company, you've been a big fan of this company or anything um, that you wish to express that you can't express on your resume, you want to put that in your cover letter. Um, so you really want to capture the recruiter's attention with your cover letter, but don't make it too long because we all have short attention spans and we're all really busy and don't have a lot of time. So really um, three brief paragraphs is perfect. Um, so once you get those materials in order, um, in addition, it is great to have an updated LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn is, um, I think it's at its peak. It is really user-friendly and I will take you to my page. Um, it's really user-friendly. It is great for professional networking. So, you know, I can go to a conference and meet people and it's, I feel like we don't really need to exchange business cards anymore. I can just take a picture of their name tag on my phone and find them on LinkedIn. So I did that this past fall. I didn't have business cards yet. So I went to a conference <laughs> And I just, I said, do you mind if I take a picture of your name tag? And then I found them on LinkedIn after the conference and then messaged them and connected with them that way. Um, so we're saving paper. And so on LinkedIn, this is my profile. And I think I mentioned earlier, um, you can edit your your person, your profile name, which LinkedIn makes it for you, but I made it so it's my first and last name. So a lot of times it'll have a bunch of numbers in it, but it's just easier if, or I think looks better if it's just your, your name in that profile. And for, um, LinkedIn, what I did is I just suggest you find someone who you admire and you look at their profile and then you try and mimic it, right? So I looked at another career counselor's profile and she had, um, I didn't copy it exactly, of course, but she had, you know, a similar heading like mine 
And, um, and then if you scroll down, I just put my experience with the titles of the jobs, the dates, and where I was. Um, I, my personal opinion is that you don't need to have your entire resume on here. That's what your resume is for. So you don't need to fill the page. I feel like it looks cleaner without all the bullets, but it is a complete personal preference. Um, then your education. And hopefully you all know there's LinkedIn Learning, which you all can get access to for free through your Tulane email address. Um, if your LinkedIn is set up already with your Gmail, it doesn't matter. You just go to this. You can Google, um, you know, Tulane LinkedIn Learning, and then you go to the page and it says activate your account and it'll automatically attach to your LinkedIn. So you can get some licenses, I mean, cert certifications online through LinkedIn Learning. So, um, you know, I'll do some that are career counseling related. Um, I recommend that I was doing some mock interviews last semester with some undergrad students, and we were talking about the dreaded question of what are your strengths and weaknesses? And they all said, I did mock interviews with five students. Every single one of them said time management. So I said, okay, let's go to LinkedIn Learning and search for time management. So there's 144 courses on time management in LinkedIn Learning. So you just can listen to them. Um, you can see on the bottom right how long they are. This one's 11 minutes. This one at the top is an hour and 47 minutes. So you can decide how much time you have. This one's 31. And then you take a quiz. And you can add the certification to your LinkedIn profile. I um, So I recommend if you if you know your weakness, then take some LinkedIn learning courses get the certifications, put them on your profile. And when you're in an interview and they ask you what are your strengths and weaknesses, of course, tell them your strengths, go with the positive, tell them your weakness, but end it on a positive note by saying, um, time management is my weakness, but I've been working on it. I'm aware of it. And I have been doing some LinkedIn learning certifications online. And um, so hopefully I'm improving. And then that will end that question on a positive note. And also, if you do any volunteer work, you can put that on here. And what I like to look at, um, so this is this is the woman who I looked at her profile because she's a career counselor. And so I liked how her profile was set up. But if you go to companies, you can see someone in your industry um, or, you know, what they're following. And then you can follow those things. So it can give you ideas of what to follow. And, and then that'll pop up, of course, um, on your LinkedIn homepage. And a lot of times, you know, if you, you follow the companies where you might want to work, their recruiters will be posting about open positions. So I recommend that you, um, you know, definitely have a professional headshot on your, and it doesn't have to be a one taken by a professional. Um, you know, a family member can take it at home, but just make sure, you know, it's professional, you're dressed up, and you have a nice background image, and then connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with your professors, connect with your academic advisors, connect with classmates. Um, you just never know who someone is connected to. So if you see on LinkedIn that I'm connected to someone at a company where you want to work, um, if it's one of my good friends, I'm happy to connect the two of you um, or send them your resume. So 
you really never know who um, is going to create a connection for you. And one of the most amazing things about LinkedIn is if you click on Tulane University, you can do this for your high school too, or if you went to another um, academic institution, you can go to any of them. And you click on alumni and um, you'll see there's over 81,000 people on LinkedIn that have Tulane University in their profile. And then you search for, and I'm just gonna go for like a local um, advertising company, um, Peter Mayer. And let's say you wanted to work there. So you'll see there's 54 people that have Tulane University and Peter Mayer in their profile. So the people who come up first, um, a lot of them are going to be one, like I have 10 connections um, with this person. I don't know her though, but I could ask my friend Jackie if she could connect us. So, um, you know, always look to see who you know in common and that'll be on there. When I wanted to work at Tulane, I went ahead and started reaching out to other career counselors at Tulane, even though I didn't even know them. Um, so you can be as bold as you want to be um, or ask someone to connect you. So it literally, I did that search in two seconds. And I think it's pretty awesome. Um, if people don't have their profiles locked, you can just send them a message. Um, if you want to, you know, work in marketing, um, this is an awesome, awesome route to take. Um, to, and I wanted to also show you, there's a couple of students, and I hope they don't mind, who I really like their background photos. So Grace is studying communications at SOPA, and she works for the Saints and for Tulane and the Pelicans. She does like their social media accounts. So I just think this, this really says a lot about her, um, this awesome background photo. And then I have another student who is into computer programming and it's just simple, but it says a lot. So I really love when people put some thought into their background photo because it, it can be really impactful. Um, this student, I told him to, he was doing some cloud certifications online outside of school and he started putting, adding those to his profile and recruiters started reaching out to him on LinkedIn, um, asking him to apply for jobs. So there are algorithms um, that prove that, um, you know, as much in you need to be active. Um, if you're open to work, you can put that you're open to work on your profile. You can, you know, put the city where you want to be in your profile. Um, these are all things that recruiters search for. Um, keywords in the industry that you're looking for. So if you like for my profile, if I was still looking for a career counseling position to have all these words in my profile would help a recruiter find me. And people reach out to me. Um, I'm always on LinkedIn. So the more active you are, the better. And then that your profile will be shown to recruiters more than someone who's inactive. And I was at a conference in the fall and one of the men on the panel said that his wife's a recruiter for a tech company. And the only platform that she uses to hire people is LinkedIn. So I was, he's like, go tell your students they need to be on LinkedIn. So um, I was like really blown away by that statement. 
And um, so hopefully that will encourage you all. It's it can be fun and you can find out a lot on LinkedIn. Um, this is New Orleans Entrepreneur Week is going on right now. I was there yesterday. Um, I um, went to a networking event with one of our students. We met so many people. There were people who were there who were representing their companies who went to Tulane. They were so excited that we were there. Um, two Tulane graduates just started a really cool company called Rise um, that they're going to try to help students. It's a platform to help students get placed in internships because they felt like they there was a need for that when they were in school. They were having a hard time finding summer internships or apprenticeships or internships during the year. So they're starting it. And Idea Village is um, helping them build it. So I met them yesterday. It was awesome. Um, but so my next tip <laughs> is to attend networking events. So you can find out about so many via LinkedIn. I follow Idea Village, um, New Orleans Chamber of Commerce, Jefferson Parish Chamber of Commerce. So wherever you're located, um, follow your Chamber of Commerce, figure out which organizations um, host local networking events and follow them. And you'll start seeing tons of events. Um, on Eventbrite, which we are we have posted we're going to start to use it at sopa to um promote some of our events and just see how it goes so i'll show y'all we have um our two lane tech talk coming up so this is the eventbrite homepage you all have probably been on it so i go look on it all the time i know you all get my my emails um once a week and hopefully you read them but if you search, on, look for business events um, and then types of business events, I'm in New Orleans, you can change your city, change the date. Um, but there's so many things on here. New Orleans Entrepreneur Week was on here. Um, and there's job fairs, there's virtual fairs. So, you know, networking events, search for what you're interested in. A lot of these events are free, which is unbelievable. In addition to mentioning LinkedIn is free. So, I mean, it's such a huge asset and you can find tons of business events on here for free, tons of events on LinkedIn for free. And then you get LinkedIn learning with your Tulane email address for free. So. Um, all of these things are just huge career boosters for people. Um, and to be able to reach out to a recruiter through a message on LinkedIn, where normally you would have to like search a website or call the company and ask for the recruiter's email. I mean, you can just message them directly on LinkedIn. It's unbelievable. Um, so what I like to do when I'm searching for a job is um, similar to what I showed y'all on the um, Canvas page where I made, um, I'll show y'all again, lists for each area of study. I like to create my own personal list of places where I want to work. Um, and then I'll just, I always create it in a Google spreadsheet. I save it. You can use it now. You can use it 10 years from now. If you're going to stay in the same industry and stay in the same city, your list probably won't change that much. So you can add to that list. You can add any contacts names that you got, um, their email addresses, direct links to their career page. And for me, it's, it's just helpful to have that in addition to searching on indeed.com to have a link to all the places that I'm interested in working. And then should something come, come to mind, I'll send myself an email and add it. And then that list can just grow. And it's just something that 
you can have to check from time to time. And so like on here, I started putting um, Fortune 500 companies, which is kind of fun. Um, so I encourage everyone to dream big. Um, and so if you go to any of, you know, you can create your own list similar to this. Um, if you want to work in HR or marketing or, um, you know, do recruiting or whatever, all of these companies are going to have all of these departments. Um, and so I encourage you all, even if you aren't um, in an education program, it doesn't mean you can't work at a school. There's so many other jobs at a school. And, um, you know, this same with at a marketing company or a tech company, there's so many different positions to fill. And right now, it is, I was just talking about it with people at the NOE at the conference last night at the networking event, how the South were kind of, um, we're like just on a, you know, different wavelength than the rest of the country. We see in the news right now that there's so many layoffs going on and knock on wood. And thankfully it's not really happening here. It's, you know, in Silicon Valley, but that is what we're seeing on the news. And, but I mean, from what, from just walking around the room last night at this networking event, they were all local tech companies hiring, but it wasn't just tech programming positions. It was marketing, HR, graphic design, all of this, all of these different types of positions. They're all hiring summer interns and um, one company was doing an apprenticeship. Some companies were new companies. So it was just really exciting to meet all these people and then also know that some of the CEOs of these companies are um, Tulane graduates. So of course they want to hire from Tulane. Like that's such a great connection piece. And one more thing about LinkedIn. Um, I saw this guy, he spoke for Tulane professional development. He lives out in California and he was just really captivating. And he put on his PowerPoint, he reaches out to people on LinkedIn if they went to Tulane and he's looking for a job. And, you know, so he put on his LinkedIn, I mean, on his PowerPoint, his, his sample message that he sends to people on LinkedIn. And so I, I took a photo of it with my phone and then I I typed it up. I saved it in a document, but it's just a, an example I can send to you all. If you want to reach out to someone on LinkedIn, but you really don't know what to say, um, let me know. I can help you craft that message. I can show you what he wrote. And it was just short and sweet, um, but it's just making that connection like, oh, I see you went to Tulane. I've been in marketing for um, five years now, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a new job. Do you have any advice? My resume is attached. You know, if you live in the same city, you can ask them if they'd be interested in getting coffee together or Zoom. And those things really do happen. Um, you know, I had a student who wanted to be in this internship program and she found someone on LinkedIn in the internship program, she messaged him, asked him if he would meet her over Zoom to discuss the internship program because she wanted to learn more about it. And he was like, yes, absolutely. And he then they met. So not everyone's going to respond, but some people are, and they can really help you along the way. Um, so my seventh tip, um, oh, we went over this, is indeed.com. That was my favorite website when I was looking for jobs um, to create a profile, upload your resume and get those weekly emails sent to you. Um, so once you secure a job, um, I mentioned before, we can meet and Zoom. I can send you sample interview questions in advance. There's probably about 20 questions that are really typical in an interview. 
Um, the first one is tell me about yourself. And when someone asks you that, you really want to just tell them professionally about yourself. They're not really asking. You can tell them where you're from. Um, I think that that is interesting. And if you say you're from Birmingham, they might have an aunt and uncle who live there, or you never know how that connection can work out. Um, they're not asking you if you have kids or if you have a dog. Um, they want to know what you've studied and a little bit about your work history. So I recently helped a student kind of craft her elevator pitch about where she's from and why she wanted this job in Boston and um, what she had been studying and what she thought were going to be you know, skills that were going to be useful in the position. And she talked about the research she had done on the company. And we discussed the other credit question, what are your strengths and weaknesses? But we definitely have a plan for that now. Um, and then, um, you know, tell me about a challenge you've had at a job or, you know, at school and how you've overcome it. So it's really good if you prepare yourself for those questions because people do ask those questions. I think I got asked all of those questions when I interviewed um, here at SOFA. So definitely be prepared for them because they are um, the norms. And then when I got the job uh, or I was about to be given the job at SOFA, they reached out to me and asked for three references. And if a company asks you for your references, you're about to get the job. Um, they don't call people and ask them about you unless they're like at the final stages of that interview process. So it's always good. And I have on the career services portal um, it's always good and I can send you a sample and you can just type in, um, your references, but it's good to have a document like this already prepared. Um, and you just, you know, have your information at the top and then three references they typically call references. You can put their cell phone number and their um, and their email. And hopefully you have three professional references. I don't recommend that you put family or friends, but we could talk about it. You can get you can ask professors. Um, if you've worked with me, I can be one. Um, you can ask your academic advisor. So if there, you know, there are definitely people here at Tulane who can be your references. And then hopefully you'll have one or two professional references. It does not have to be your boss. It can be a colleague that you work with. Um, it doesn't have to be a superior. It can be someone who was your equal or someone who worked below you. It's just someone who knows you, who you think will speak highly of you when asked a few questions about your upcoming position. So I always have references ready. And out of the three people who were my references, one of them knew that I was applying for this job. So I didn't really have to give him a heads up. We had been talking about it the whole time. He was a Tulane alumni, so he was excited and he knew that I was interviewing. And the other two people who were my references lived out of, they, were, they didn't live in New Orleans. One was in Baton Rouge, one was in New York. And when I was when I gave my references, it was literally their busiest week of the year. It was law firm recruitment week. Um, you were just so busy. So I sent both of them a text and I said, hi, I'm interviewing for this job. Please look out for a 504 phone call um, this week because um, I put you down as a reference. And those two people that I put down, they were like, thank you so much for the heads up. I never would have answered the phone this week or returned a call 
Um, and thanks so much for pointing out it's coming from a 504 number. I will definitely be on the lookout. And then when they, both of them, when they had spoken to my now supervisor here, they texted me, say, hey, I got the call. Um, you know, thanks so much again for the heads up. So if you put someone down as a reference, definitely let them know. Because as we all know, we never answer our phones unless we know the number. So sometimes people don't have a voicemail and sometimes the voicemail boxes are full. So you definitely want to let them know they're going to be getting a phone call about um, the job that you've applied for. And they will appreciate the heads up so they're not caught off guard or can make time to find a quiet place to return the call. Um, so references are really important. And um, some companies ask for them. Some companies don't. Tulane definitely did. They called all three of my references. Um, and that was just this past August. So be prepared to have three ready to go. And um, and then if they don't ask, it's fine. Um, references are not something that you need to provide in advance. You can wait until your until the em potential employer asks. It's definitely not something that you need to provide in advance um, with any of your materials for your application. Um, so last but not least, oh my gosh, it's 4, 549. Be responsive. So if you didn't listen to anything that I said today, um, reply to all emails, reply to any phone calls, um, just reply, it, even if it's just a thank you. And everyone matters from um, the recruiter to the receptionist to the everyone that is involved in your potential job process. So thank people, write thank you notes. Um, they can be thank you emails, you don't have to send them in the mail, um, but just be responsive. So if someone emails you, try to get back to them as soon as possible, especially if it's about a job. Okay, it's 5.50. <laughs> thank you, Susan. That was so great. Guess what? I'm going to have you um, look at my resume <laughs> one day when we're at work together. Um, that was so good. I learned so much. Thank you. Um, oh, um, Lily has a question. You want to, you can take yourself off mute. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, um, two things. Uh, one, well, I guess, thank you very much for all of that helpful information. That was really great. Um, is there a place where we can rewatch this recording? Because I had to drive and I would love to go back and look at some of the stuff that you shared. We're definitely recording it. Um, so we can email it to you. Okay, that would be great. And then the second thing, um, how is the best way to contact you to schedule like a Zoom meeting if we would like to meet with you? So I put, I don't, you might not be able to see the chat, um, but I'll, I'll email you right now. Um, so just email me. I don't do Calendly or put my calendar in Handshake right now, um, just because it changes all the time. So just email me and I'll send you some dates and times, and then I'll send you a calendar invite and we will get together. So I'll send, I'll send you my contact information. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Um, and I just want to say a quick note before everyone leaves. Um, for those of you who were late, um, my name is Alexa Stone. I'm an academic advisor here at SOPA. I'm also the staff advisor for SOPA SO, which is our student organization at SOPA. Um, I just wanted to give like a, cre a brief um, note about our student organization. So it's open to any SOPA student, undergraduate and graduate students. You don't have to be, you can be online. I'm an in-person student. Um, anyone can join. Um, so this event was sponsored by our student organization. We're going to try and have more events like this every semester, at least one in-person event for all of our online learning students. And I'm sorry, one online event for our online students and one in-person event um, for our students who would like to join us in person. We're going to do um, at least one or two a semester. Um, and so later on this week or next week, I'm going to send an invite to everyone who joined the call, see if you're interested in joining the organization to get more um, 
you know, some input from you about what other events you would like to have, whether they're social or whether they're career events moving forward. We'd just like everyone's input on what type of events you want to have as a SOPA student to get involved um, and just to meet other students, maybe outside of your major, meet other staff members, do some of that networking information that Susan was talking about. Um, so I will send everyone um, an invite to join the organization. Um, we also will have a few um, in the next few semesters, some leadership roles that will be available because we have some students that are graduating soon. Um, so we may have some positions open if you're interested in joining SOPASO and being on our leadership board, um, which is also a good thing to have on your resume, right, Susan? <laughs> um, and even being a part of SOPASO is a good thing to have on your resume, too, as well. Um, so if anyone doesn't have any other questions, does anyone have any questions? You can unmute yourself. You can put it in the chat. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate your time. Um, I learned so much. I hope you guys did as well. Um, and just look out for some future events. Like I said, next month, we're going to have an in-person event. Um, and we'll send an email about that out um, in the next couple of weeks, um, if you would like to join. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Have a good weekend. Thank, thank y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.